Hi there folks, welcome back to the IBN Andy Fishing channel. I hope you're doing really well. Welcome to those of you who haven't seen any of our vlogs before. Please be sure to hit the little subscribe button somewhere, somewhere down there, isn't it? For those of you who have watched before who are subscribed, thank you very much for coming back. Really appreciate it. IB, how you doing? I'm all right, and I have a magazine <laughs> just that's about there somewhere. Me that says my name, and it fits my whole name into one page. And they actually spelled it right as well. They spelled it right. It's not Lever, it's actually Yeva, but you're so excited. Absolute miracle. You got yourself a little magazine. <laughs> I know. <laughs> We're back with another Review Tuesday. Now we've got loads of Review Tuesdays coming up. You've crafted a review on your Airflow pack. Yes, which that's going to be really next cool. Next week. Yep. Then we've also been playing around a company in the Nymphomaniac Rod. We've already done the review on. We've got the Nymphomaniac Reel in hand at the moment, which we're really enjoying playing around with. So there's a Review Tuesday coming up with that one. So make sure if that's something you're interested in, make sure you subscribe to the channel because all this stuff is coming up real soon. So we're here to talk about something super exciting today. This is something that we've been working on for a few months. And I'm so nervous. I, keep, I kept saying to you, the camera, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous. So this is something that's come about as a direct result of you guys and the comments that we get and the feedback we get from the vlogs. And th there are certain standout questions that always come up. And one of the big questions we've always been asked is, what flies are you using? What flies? What flies are you using? Why haven't you shown your flies? Yeah, why haven't you shown us the flies? Can you show us the flies? Can you show us what flies are you using? All that kind of stuff. And do you know what? For someone who's new to river fly fishing, I think this is one of the hardest things. I think some of the technical aspects of river fly fishing aren't rocket science. But the entomological side of it is a little bit harder. You can turn up to a still water with a team of buzzers or a team of crunchers or a cat's whisker or something and lob it out. And the chances are at some point something's going to hang itself for you. But actually, for you guys who are river anglers, for us guys as river anglers, the entomological side of it, the fly side of it, is a little bit more technical than that. Unfortunately, every time you open one of these magazines or watch a YouTube vlog or speak to someone else, they're going to tell you that this fly or these flies are the absolute musts and... Every time you speak to someone else, it's a new must-have fly. It's actually something that I found once I started tying my own flies. It's not just what fly to tie, but there are so many different variations yeah. of flies that can take a fly and it's going to look entirely different. It's going to look nothing alike. And then the sizes, if you're fishing nymphs, the weights is, yeah, it's mind-boggling. So we looked at this and thought, actually, rather than being part of the problem here by suggesting a load of more flies, actually, we can create a solution here. This isn't something that we've just dreamed up. You guys have been watching us catch fish on this channel for nearly three years. Is it nearly three years it is, isn't yeah. it? I've not got that wrong. It's flown by. So this is something that we've unwittingly, unknowingly actually been working on ever since we started this channel. And it's got to the point now where we looked at it and said, actually, now's the right time we can help we we, we want to help you guys to make this a little bit easier so ib tell us what's going on i can't i can't even tell even thinking about it i get so excited <laughs> the whole time you were talking now i'm like just shut up just <laughs> get to the point so ib why don't you show the people exactly what it is we've been working on for the last couple of months this is just, it's not going to look as exciting it's just round box <laughs> <laughs> Oh, should I open it? Oh, yeah, absolutely, yeah. I will open yep. it to you doing an the announcement, okay? Tom -da -da okay, so, so what we've got here in this brown box are what we're going to uh, try and work with going forwards as our fly selections for winter grayling fishing. There are going to be two selections, and the format is very simple. These come in a box that is posted direct to your door, uh, recorded first-class Royal Mail delivery. All the flies on there are listed, and we're going to back these up with vlogs explaining why we've chosen these flies, how to use them, why they're effective, and why we believe that these are the flies for winter grayling fishing that are the most important ones. So IB has got their... I have the clear set. You've got the clear water set, and we're also backing that up with a coloured water set. And we thought it was important, we were going to try and do this in one, but actually when we looked at it, we think it's really important that there's a division in between nymph fishing for grayling in clear water and coloured water, because the kind of flies you use are very different, aren't they? I will say one thing, explain coloured water, because I think, especially for me, for the first year, I had a very different idea of coloured water and clear water. Every single time when I have a clear water, I would be like, well, that's a chalk stream. Yeah. I don't fish clear water. Yeah, so okay, so yes, happen. it's really important to talk about that. So coloured water for the vast majority of UK rivers, apart from the chalk streams, is that water where, where the river has risen and it's coloured. Think about, uh, I did a vlog earlier on this year, or perhaps it was last year, actually, fish, fishing coloured water. You and I did that vlog fishing the Derwent, the Derwent Challenge, which, granted, didn't go as well for you as it did for me. 
But what it did prove is that actually, even in those really bad conditions, you can still catch grayling on nymphs if you've got the right kind of flies in the right kind of places. And actually a lot of the flies that featured in that vlog are in that colored water box, because they're the flies I use when I'm fishing, they're the flies I guide with. So a few of these patterns in there will feel very familiar. Don't hear coloured water and think possibly that, you know, a, a northern freestone that's peaty and stuff like that. It's actually the clear water set that you probably use up there. Definitely in the chalk streams. All these are absolute slayers. Clear water is good water conditions. We're not talking chalk stream, we're talking good water conditions. Like I said, we'd use these a lot on the yeah, dove. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dove, the Y, the, the Derwent, yeah, absolutely, clear. absolutely. Coloured water is when it's coming down from a flood and you need a little bit more pop with the colours, a little bit more bulk, but we'll go into that more as we explain what's in each pack. So that's what we're going to do. We're just going to go through the patterns in each pack, why they're in there, and why we think that these are really important flies and something that's going to help you catch more fish going forwards. So if Glamour Assistant IB could just hold that up to the camera again for me. So in each pack, what we've got here are 10 patterns and there are three of each. So each box has 30 flies in total. This is one of the things actually we talked about. There are lots of selection packs out there. It drives me bonkers when you buy a selection pack and there's one of each fly. To be fair, I don't like that either. It's I, so I had annoying. That. It happened to me. Yeah. I had a little Mayfly pack last year in, in Mayfly and that only one, I think it was like a a white with uh, black stripes uh, mayfly that worked and then I lost it. And, and then you're then... stuck. Yeah, you're totally <laughs> stuck. So we've done away with that. It's 10 patterns, three of each. That way you don't have to worry about dragging them on the deck, which is what you're gonna do a lot of the time when, you, when you're when you grailing fishing in the winter. You know, there'll be enough flies that you can use a three fly rig. You could just fish these under an indicator. You know, there's lots of different ways of fishing these, but in terms of the format, 10 patterns, three of each. And we've tried to, we've tried to even them out or, or spread them out in size and weight order. So you can see there we start very small down here and we get to the real big stuff at the bottom. So I think we'll start with the top left fly, the smallest fly of this set, the little mini pink quill. So this is a great pattern for if you're fishing very clear water, very skinny water. It's a great top dropper in skinny water, this one. I, I don't think that you're only gonna catch little grayling on them. Yeah, Just because it's a small fly, I have quite plenty of decent grayling on it because Fly size doesn't matter. It's worked really well on the Y, I've found. We, we, we get a lot of situations on the Y where you'll have fish close in at the edge and you can't throw a big indicator on them. So you, what you tend to have to do very quickly is turn your dry fly rod into just a single nymph rod. And it's a great little fly for stalking fish. Obviously, it's tiny. It's got that silver bead. It's got a little bit of spangle. There's just enough there to pull a grayling's attention. And this is a fly that absolutely I don't think either of us would be without. But there isn't as much on the fly that when you land it, you spook every fish in the river. It's a great little stalking fly, isn't it? Next one, big shrimp. Yeah, really obvious. This is a size 16 pink shrimp. Absolutely no grayling selection would be without this pink shrimp. It's an absolute killer. Actually, this one works in coloured water as well. This could have gone in either box. Is it a shrimpy shrimp? It's a shrimpy shrimp, yes, you have a shrimpy shrimp, nice pink colour, but it's not in your face. The reason this one went in the clear water box is because this wasn't smashing you in the face colour. It's a relatively natural kind of dirty pink colour. It's a very colour, subtle, yeah, very yeah. subtle colour, isn't it? Great fly. If you're fishing two flies, a great one for the top dropper. If you're fishing three, I'd put this one on the middle dropper, I reckon. Get it down just above that point fly where those shrimps and scuds are in the in the in the water column. Absolutely fantastic little dropper. Size 16, ABs, baby pink. Ooh, yeah, ooh, ooh. yeah, absolutely. So this is one of my patterns. I've tied all of these myself. These are my own size. This is one of my absolute must-have grayling flies. It's a fly actually I featured in my top five grayling flies last year. Essentially, it's a caddy scrub, but with that baby pink bead, there is something about that colour on that baby pink bead. They just cannot resist. Again, if you're fishing at a two-fly rig, you would have this on the top dropper. It's not quite heavy enough to fish as a point fly. There's a 2.5mm bead on there. If you're fishing three flies, to be honest, you could fish this either as a middle dropper or as a top dropper. That little pang of colour actually pulls fish up. So in a three-fly rig, don't be scared about using that as a top dropper. It works brilliantly. Next one up, size 16, Duracell Nymph. Oh, I mean, this is just one of those flies, isn't it? It's an absolute must-have. It's it's become a, a modern-day classic. I only if I, I only had to choose two flies, I would always choose a a some sort of tag, a red or a pink tag, and a Duracell. Actually, again, works quite nicely in slightly coloured water it as well. It has so much movement in it when it's in the water. Absolutely, a, a, a must-have grading fly, definitely. You'd and again, you probably you could fish that one on the point. You could fish that one on a top dropper on a three fly rig. Uh, you could fish it as the dropper on a two fly rig. It's one of those flies you could just sit below an indicator as well. Great as a duo fly because, as, as IB says, it's so mobile. A brilliant grayling fly. 
Size 16 soft red tag. Yeah, so absolutely. So we'll, we'll talk about the word soft in there first before we talk about the fly because this is your absolute favourite, isn't it? Oh. So, so we've got a soft red tag and there's another soft in here, but we've actually got a red tag in the coloured water box as well. But we'll talk about why they're different once we get to the coloured water. So soft here is just a reference to the mobility of this fly. It's also full of movement with all the little tiny feathers as well. I just like seeing, you know, like if you if you put it in a glass of water and you can see even while the fly is dropping, you have all that really lovely movement. That CDC hackle, it gathers up a little bit of air, nice sensible bead size. Actually, this one on a two fly rig, you could fish on the point because that's a 3.2 more bead. Uh, you could fish this on the middle dropper or the top dropper of a three fly rig. It's got enough weight. You could just sit it below an indicator because it's so mobile. Really, really versatile fly, this one. And if any of you people are following me on uh, Instagram or on Facebook, you'll know that I bloody love... A red tag. You love a red tag, don't you? That's IB's fly in this pack, I reckon. Size 14, AB's orange colour hair's hair. Yeah, so uh, no fly selection is uh, complete without a hair's hair. And this is, again, this has become a real kind of modern classic. There's lots of different versions of this fly now, but essentially what you've got there is a nice spiky hair's ear with a nice bright orange colour with uh, just behind a gold bead. It's tied on a curved shank hook with some uh, UV tinsel. On it just to catch a little bit of light. Again, great point fly, fantastic point fly. You're imitating caddy scrubs there, so you'd want that down. On a three fly rig, you could fish it on the point or you could fish it on the middle dropper, keep it down low. But that, that orange there, actually, again, this is one of the flies that could have gone in either box, but just because of that nice kind of natural bugginess of the hairs here, I think it's the right thing to put in a clear water. Next one is size 14, soft pink tag. So, so a little, little bit of inside track here. So Ivy and I went out to film a little bit of footage, just catching a few fish on these flies, didn't we? We literally out for an hour and I went and caught my biggest dove fish in absolutely years on this soft pink tag. Again, an absolute classic and every grayling pack has to have a pink tag. It's one of those flies, isn't it? Nice and mobile, good colour bead. How epic was that fish? I don't care about your fish. It wasn't me who caught it. Shut up. <laughs> just rubbing it in everyone's faces. You had a big railing. <laughs> yeah, really, really pleased with that one. And again, just to, we just went out for an hour or so, didn't we? And, and it came was up absolutely with... epic. And in fairness, I love a tag. Like anything with a tag. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the science behind it is. I'm not clever enough to know. Trout and grayling love a fly with a tag on it. We couldn't have done the clear water pack without a pink tag. So that's definitely going in there. Size 14, pink colour, pheasant tail nymph. Who doesn't love a pheasant tail? I do like a pheasant tail. We, we, again, we couldn't have done this pack without a pheasant tail nymph. It's an absolute essential. And just for that little dash of pink on the front, that is a great grayling fly. It's going to start sounding, I could not live without this fly. Well, this, the, every fly. Well, this is why we've put these packs together, because we just know from experience, and you guys know from watching us, that these are the flies that we use. And I, I couldn't go fishing for grayling without pheasant tails. Again, great as a point fly on a two-fly rig. You could fish it on the point, or you could fish it on the middle drop. Actually, you could fish this on the top dropper on a three-fly rig. Again, you could just sit it underneath a big head. Clink hammer. Absolute killer on the rubber wire. I think it's because it's a bit more natural, a bit more subtle. It slays on the dark show. Great clear water. The chalk stream guys will absolutely love that one as well. Fantastic fly. Next one we have size 14, deep purple. Yeah, so I think this is one of the really important flies in this pack actually. It's a, on its own a fabulous grading fly. We could possibly have put this in in a 16, but I wanted to put this in because there's quite a heavy bead on the front of this. It's a three and a half mil bead which makes this a great point fly on a two fly rig in slightly deeper water. It makes it a very, very good point fly on a three fly rig in shallow to mid depth water. It's a great color. It's got that silver bead. So there's lots of light bouncing off there. That little bit of purple, Grayling freaking love purple. It's a fabulous fly. And I just like the fact that it's slightly heavier on the bead. It, it, it's an option as a point fly. So I think that's a really important one. And again, a fly that we catch a lot of fish on. Oh, now the last but not least is your own tied point flies. Yeah, so we'll talk about these very quickly actually. So point flies are quite a complicated thing to buy. Actually, it's very, very hard to buy heavy point flies. Not many fly brands want to do these heavy beads because they're expensive and that really frustrates me. And it's one of the things that I've sold a lot of over the years to clients because you just can't get these anywhere else. So this one's a little bit different in that the three flies here are different flies. So what we've got here is a four mil bead a four and a half mil bead and a five and a half mil bead, the real big biggie that I had to use to get down during that Derwent vlog. All different size beads for different occasions. And what I've done to ensure that you guys while you're on the bank can tell the difference between them, because it's not always obvious, is I have what I call a traffic light system here. So the green one is the four mil. The yellow one, the mid-sized one, is yellow. 
and the 5.5mm B, the real big biggie, he's a red tag. So they're all slightly different, but all tied on the same pattern. It's essentially a hare's ear with a nice mobile CDC collar. This is a pattern I've been working on for quite a long time, actually. I've been fishing these for a few years, and actually, it's one of the point flies I catch a lot of fish on. Particularly that green one, actually, I catch a lot of fish on him. But I've caught fish in all three, and it's very unusual to catch a fish on a 5.5mm B fly. Generally, they just spit them straight out. These work. We could have just put in a, like a chewing gum caddis or something like that. My issue with using the peeping caddis pattern as a point fly is that it has such a broad profile. It's such a bulky thing that I genuinely believe that, that they don't sink quite as quickly and they get pushed more by the water. But just because they're so broad, it's, just, it's such a chunky thing. These are actually very skinny. It's a very, very slender fly that's bulked out by that CDC hackle. So for those of you guys who fish deeper water or faster water, you're going to love that 5.5mm B because he'll get you down there into the zone. He'll get you fishing a lot quicker than perhaps a, a heavy peeping caddis would. Oh, what I do, if I'm fishing a French leader, I will always use uh, and this point flies to control the indicator if it's really windy. It's a good shout actually, yeah. If it's really windy and you're in that, uh, your French leader indicator is getting blown around, a great option. It will just anchor the indicator down. Absolutely, and it'll get you through more slowly as well, yeah. doesn't it? It just keeps those flies in the zone for a little bit longer. So there you go, that is all 10 patterns of our clear water set. as glamorously modelled by IB there. These are the flies that we use, these are the flies we've been using on the vlogs, these are the flies that we can absolutely recommend to you as flies that definitely catch grayling right the way through the winter. So we need to have a look at the second pack, don't we? You're such a, such a glamorous model, you do this so nicely. <laughs> so there we go, that is the grayling set coloured water. And as we've already talked about, with what we're talking about here is, is kind of post flood water conditions you know when the water's a little bit muddy when the river's not clear we're confident that these flies work or some rivers are just a bit more colored like the, some of the rivers that i fish are just around weirs absolutely yes yeah. so again we'll go through these one by one just very quickly explain why they're in there and the first fly is uh, quite important that we, we separate the difference out so we've got what's called a contrast pink tag now, obviously we had a pink tag in the previous box the soft pink tag but it's, it's not quite as bulky a thing, the soft pink tag. It's very mobile, but there's not much to it. We wanted to put this in. It's got a slightly more kind of pangy pink tag to it. It's what I call over-the-top pink. <laughs> it's, it's, it really is a neon pink. But the body is slightly darker. The hackle is slightly more bulky. It's just got a bit more presence in the water. And actually, I find I use this a lot more in coloured water than I use the soft pink tag that's in the other box. So yeah, why you might say, well, hang on a minute. You had a pink tag in the other one. Actually, this one is more appropriate for the kind of water condition we're talking about when we say coloured water. A really important fly again, actually very effective on the Y when that's coming down. Yeah. Really well on the Y on that one. So that's the size 14 contrast pink tag. The next fly size 14 orange bead hairs it. So do you know what? This this is a real guides fly, this one. I've been quite lucky to spend a lot of time with different fishing guides from different parts of the world, uh, particularly trout fly fishing guides. And I've noticed we've all got a sneaky little orange bead lurking somewhere at the edge of the box that when things are hard you go i'll put the orange bead on actually not just in colored water actually i know orosh in slovenia our buddy who we went and did some fishing in with. crystal clear water in crystal clear water they say swear by the orange tag but actually i really like this one in colored water it's a size 14 again it's a fair chunk there's a bit of flash in there it gets down you could fish it on the point on the two fly rig you could fish it on the middle drop or the top drop on a on a three fly rig it gets seen, and that's so important in coloured water. Get that fly seen. The next fly is size 14, contrast red tag. Yeah, so again, we'll kind of explain this. So just, just as with the, the contrast pink tag, this is a more um, bulky, more obvious fly. It's darker. There's more of a contrast to the colours. There's a bigger silhouette. Bright gold B, bouncing plenty of light off it. Nice and mobile still with, with that CDC collar. But there's more presence to it in the water, isn't there? It's just an all-round bulkier thing. This again, is, just a bit over the top. Yeah, this that is one that you use nice. a lot, isn't it? I do. It? I do use a lot. And that's partly because of the waters where I fish, like I mentioned, the river Dover fish, it's right uh, below and then just, just a little bit of stream of the weir. So the water there is always coloured and that fly has always slayed on there. So yeah, I don't think I would even bother to leave the house if I didn't have this fly. So as simple as that. Do you fish it on the point? Do you fish it on the dropper? Oh, I would probably fish it on the point if the river is normal level, I would say. And if the river is really hard, pushing through really hard like it was a couple of days ago, I'd probably use one of your flies to, to get everything down and then use that as a second dropper. There you go, there's IB's advice. And actually, you did really well on that on the dove log we did recently as well, didn't you? You, yes, caught, did, you yes. caught a lot of fish on that one in clear water, actually, Lots interestingly. Lots of grayling. 
The next one is the size 14 pink dub grub. Pink dubbing grub, a absolute classic fly. Again, this is one that could have gone in either actually because it works in both clear and coloured water. The reason, you have a bit of pink, don't you? Yeah, well, it's, it's just brilliant. You, you just rely on it getting seen. Uh, nice heavy bead on there. Again, nice big profile. The reason this has gone in the coloured box is because there's a neon pink rib to this that really stands out in coloured water. This is a great fly, when, just when it's thinning out after a big flood. You get that on the middle dropper on a three fly rig, on the dropper itself on a two fly rig with something like one of IB's red tags on the point. Really effective, you know it's going to get seen and as I say that's really important to me. And then the next fly is size 12, Spangle Shrimp. Yeah, so the Spangle Shrimp actually is one of the two flies that did really well for me on that Derwent vlog and has always done well for me. And this, this isn't something new. Spangly bright shrimps aren't something new. They've been around for a long time. This one's a really good example. Uh, nice flashy shell back for a start. Uh, nice fluorescent red head to it. Great on a dropper on either a two or a three fly rig. You would want to fish this with something heavier to get it down. There's not a huge amount of weight to the fly itself. But again, you just know it's going to get seen and it, it works really well for me. That one. I was a bit sceptical about that fly and I said to Andy that I'm a bit skeptical just because I had never used it that much because of how bright and shiny it is and then Andy was like just wait a second and you pull this phone out and he's like that was on that that fish was on that, <laughs> that, fish was on that and that fish was like right okay Fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, specifically for coloured water, it's not a fly you use a huge amount in clear water, but in coloured water it gets seen. And if you can get it down on the deck, they see it, they eat it. And guess we started using that fly as well. <laughs> Uh, next fly is size 12, Flash Hazer. So I mentioned actually the Spangle Shrimp was a fly that did really well for me on that Derwent vlog. Actually, the other fly that I used during that Derwent vlog to great effect was this Flash Hazer. It's a bit more subtle. It's not quite as spangly as the Spangle Shrimp, although not many flies are, to be honest. It's a bit more subtle, but it stands out. It's got a nice fluorescent rib. It's got a bit of shell back, but it's bulky as well. It's a big fly. It's got presence. Uh, you've caught a few fish on the wire on that one, I did, you? yes. Yeah, it worked well. And considering how clear the wire is as well, it's just a very versatile fly. It could have gone in, again, it could have gone in either yeah. pack, actually. A great point fly on a two-fly rig, a good point fly actually on a three-fly rig, specifically probably a better middle dropper on a three-fly rig. But it gets seen, it gets down, good weight, good profile, kind of half caddis, half olive grub, a bit of everything in there, but it's a very, very effective fly. Size 12, Grayling Shrimp. Yeah, so variation on a theme, this Grayling Shrimp, it's slightly more pale in colour, it's a little bit more subtle than the Spangle Shrimp, but a little bit more blingy than the Pink Shrimp that was in the other box. There's a little bit of flash in there, it's got good presence, it's a nice, I'm not going to say pale, it's a little bit more subtle than the Spangle Shrimp. On those days where the rivers come down enough that it's not like really chocolate brown, this is a great fly on a, on a drop on a two fly rig. Great. It doesn't have a bead on. No, no bead. So this one's going to need pulling down by a point fly. It's ever so effective. It's slightly smaller than the Spangle Shrimp. Really, really effective. Gets seen. There's a little bit of flash in there that I think is really important. Again, doesn't mean that just because it's not as bulky as the others that you're going to catch a smaller fish. Absolutely, yeah. This is, this is a fly for catching basically everything that swims. And the next fly, very controversial in my opinion, size 12, red worm. So we, we couldn't make a coloured water grayling box without a version of a squirmy. The reason we've put this one in is because it's a little bit smaller than your average squirmy. I must admit, I think most of the commercial squirmy patterns are too big. I talked in my squirmy fly time video about how I much prefer to have material either side of the bead rather than just have a massive tail. You get so many tail nips on those normal patterns, whereas this one, because it's material either side of the hook rather than just one long tail, it minimises the chances of getting those tail nips. It's a lot less frustrating. It's great as a point fly, great as a, as a middle dropper if it's really heavy. Great presence, good colour, heavy bead. These are fish catchers. Regardless of what you think about the squirmy, it catches a lot of fish. It can mean between a day of blank and a day with lots of fish. It's made a big difference to me over the years having that squirmy in the box. It's a game changer. The next fly is size 10 Super Shrimp. Super Shrimp. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so the Super Shrimp's in there. He's kind of a variation of the Spangle Shrimp, actually. It's a similar kind of dressing, perhaps not quite as bright, although it's still pretty blingy. But you've got two tungsten beads on there. So this is a great option to use as a point fly. You've got a couple of different point fly options in this box. It gets down, it gets seen. It's a fish catcher in its own right. It'll pull the others down. An all round great fly. It's, it's your best chance of catching on a point fly actually as a fly like this because it will rock it down. It will keep you in the zone. It's a fish catcher. And as I say, it gives you another option 
on that point fly, particularly with that three fly rig. You can fish that down in four or five feet of water, confident that it's getting down to the bottom. And then the last, but again, not least, is your point flies again. Yeah, absolutely. So this is, these are the only ones that are duplicated in both boxes, are those point flies. Whether you're in clear water or coloured water, they get seen because they've got that bright dress in. They get down, they're heavy, they're mobile, they catch fish. It's easy to fall into the trap of thinking, well, actually, if the water's clear, then it's probably low. And that's just not true. There are pools that we fish in the Y that it, are gin clear, but it's six foot deep and you're just not gonna get down without it. And it's the same with colored water. If you need to get down, something like that will rock it down. You can trust it. And as you go up in the bead sizes, you get so much more feedback, don't you, mm -hmm. on a French leader. The five mil probably is gonna be a little bit too big for most indicators. The four and a half, you can hold up with a foam indicator. The five and a half is a bit too much. One thing I did find with the four and a four and a half and five and a half mil beads, when I first fished with it, you kind of feel like you want to strike at everything because I'm not used to receiving so much information through my rod and you literally can feel every little bump and stone that the fly is crawling over. So I was like, oh, I have to strike and I have to strike. But like, no, you're actually just getting... So it did take me a couple of cash just to get used to how sensitive everything is and how much information you are receiving through the rod but it just helps you get down like i said i think i mainly use i don't really fish rivers that deep but i will mainly use these to keep my french leader down in windy conditions so the indicator is not parachuting everywhere in the river and i can actually fish effect, efficient efficiently it keeps you pinned down doesn't it i yeah, think it you're absolutely you're right it anchors down the whole rig and gives you loads of feedback so there we go. There is both packs absolutely sorted. So I imagine a lot of you now are looking at this saying, well, what's the deal? How do we get these? These packs are available directly through us. At the moment, we haven't got a web shop or anything. So I'm going to put my email address up here. If you are interested in buying any of the packs, please contact me at andy at abangling.co.uk. Only if you want to catch these. <laughs> for more information. In terms of price, these are £45 for 30 flies posted to your door first class recorded delivery. So it's super safe, it's super secure. They're not gonna get lost anywhere. We've got fairly limited availability on the first batch, haven't we? But we're gonna be working on more, so just stay focused and patient. So please do, if you're interested in one of the packs, please don't hesitate to contact me, andy at abangling.co.uk. As I say, the 45 pounds delivered to your door. We've got them in stock at the moment. And what we're kind of hoping from this, I think, is that if this goes wrong, it is what it is, and IB, have got, IB and I have got way too many flies Loads for the rest of, of the grayling season. <laughs> for the rest of our lives. If the, yeah, if this goes right and you guys kind of buy into the idea, I think what we might do is look at doing this through the winter and then through the trout season, there's potential for us to do like one every month or one every couple of months where we, again, do the same kind of thing. We make a pack and say, look, these are the flies that you'd want for April and these are the way we're fishing. We'll back it up with vlogs so that you guys don't feel lost. You're not just receiving flies. What we want to do is make sure that when you guys get these flies, you can then watch it, an accompanying vlog that goes with it and say, right, I understand how to use these now. Because it's one thing receiving a load of flies through the post, but it's another thing actually being able to sit down and go, yeah, I get this now. Yeah. I understand why I've got these. And I'm hoping what we can do is make the process of buying river flies a bit more simple. Because as we said at the start, I think it's a bit complicated. I think if anything, it's a bit too complicated. So I think that kind of wraps up this very long, stressful <laughs> video where we've been stressing out the whole day about making yeah. it. Please remember, if you do want this uh, fly pack, the clear water set or the colored water set, email andy at abangling.co.uk. If you want to support our channel, please do. This is a great way of doing it. And yeah, guys, we're going to see you out on the river using these flies, catching these fish the same size as well, but not bigger. <laughs> we'll see you soon. Thanks a lot for watching, folks. Take care. See you again very soon. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.